the host of RN Breakfast, Patricia Carvelis, joins us now for our regular chat on federal politics. Patricia, g'day. So uh, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, held talks with Vladimir Zelensky overnight. What can you tell us about this? Yeah, so he confirmed, I interviewed him this morning, the Prime Minister, he said he spoke to Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, overnight, and that within a couple of days, so it's imminent, Australia will be clear about how it will respond to the requests for Bushmasters, for uh, our own um, ADF personnel to train Ukrainian soldiers. He's since clarified the Prime Minister that when he talks about sending potentially our own personnel to do this training of Ukrainian troops, that it won't happen on Ukrainian soil. Now, of course, there would be security issues, wouldn't there, there, and um, safety issues, and Australia isn't going to do that. It would be um, outside of Ukraine, but clearly the government is poised to make an announcement around all of this. To be clear, if you look at our financial contribution so far, we are the biggest, biggest contributor outside of NATO countries to the war effort resisting the invasion of Russia, and clearly this new government um, is pretty serious about this and, and a commitment to this. So they're clearly is that, clarifying. Is that biggest per capita or biggest just on raw figures? Uh, biggest per capita, absolutely. Yep. Like we are the biggest contributor of this support yep. outside of the NATO alliance, yep. which you'd expect, but we're not part of that. We are a middle power. Look, we're geographically quite far away, of course. But Prime Minister Anthony Albanese spoke to me this morning. Here's what he had to say. I had a very... Uh, good discussion with President Zelensky last night. We'll give consideration to all requests uh, that are made. Have you given him a time frame for when you will make a decision about those issues, Bushmasters, all of it? We'll make a decision over over coming days. Uh, we'll give consideration to the requests uh, that have been made. And of course, so that's the Prime Minister speaking to me earlier today, but He's spoken to Zelensky. Our ambassador has been speaking, as you know, Joe, and we've been reporting to Richard Miles, the Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister. Uh, Australia really has just been uh, doing the sums and doing the maths of what we can realistically deploy, given, of course, we have our own regional issues as well. Um, but this is a, a fight that Australia is pretty committed to supporting Ukraine to winning because of uh, our general commitment to the rules-based order. Yep. OK, and now on another very different subject, uh, with tourism, uh, tourism campaigns in Australia, they've had varying success over the years. Uh, throw, a shimp, th throw a shrimp on the barbie is something that really uh, got in the minds of people around the world. And we hear that over and over when people refer to Australians now, even though that campaign was decades and decades ago. Uh, where the bloody hell are you? <laughs> Didn't quite have the same impact. Uh, there's a new campaign now, is there? Yeah, and so now we've gone with um, animation. With it. Well, actually, yep. not, not quite. It's like a computer-generated kangaroo. Her name's Ruby the you, Roo. You sound a bit sceptical, oh, Patricia. Oh, I think it's hilarious. I don't know if it'll work. I'm not a marketing expert. I know what ads I like. I, OK, I love kangaroos. And I like, like what's not to like about kangaroos. I think they're... And I think people are really captivated by these national symbols of Australia, which you only find on our continent. So it's smart in that sense. Uh, we do have to sell our distinctiveness, don't we? Um, it's going to be voiced by Rose Byrne, this okay. Ruby, the brew. I think it's funny. The funniest part of this is um, the Trade and Tourism Minister came on RM Breakfast and explained this new campaign, which I think is an important campaign, can I say. But and we do need to market Australia and there is reasons why, of course, we need to for, for our economy and generally for our outward looking, you know, getting people to come and engage with us as a country. It makes us a dynamic country. I'm very in favour of tourism and, and all of that that it brings to us. But he compared Ruby the Roo to um, Paul Hogan. I'm not sure <laughs> that the computer generated Roo is quite Paul Hogan or how Paul Hogan might feel about that. Anyway, here is my exchange with the Trade Minister. Well, Ruby the Roo is, um, if you like, uh, the new Paul Hogan. We have in the past had very, very successful campaigns to um, attract um, overseas uh, tourists to uh, to Australia. We now need to, to do that again. 
Yes, we do need to do that again. And there's a few um, interesting uh, statistics. Um, I can't recall all of them off, off the top of my head, but the Trade and Tourism Minister told me that we have a big problem with the US market. It just hasn't recovered at all. It's a trickle okay. now, and it was quite strong, the number of um, Americans coming to Australia. Uh, he conceded that price has a big, big uh, factor here. Clearly, it's very expensive to do international travel. We are very far away for a lot of people. But easier for them with the exchange rate at the moment. Well, there, there is. I love that, um, Joe. You've really thought through every element of the tourism story. Maybe so. Either way, you've got to be in it to win it, and you've got to compete. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we have some very distinctive characteristics. Kangaroos being one of them. Now, I've been completely obsessed with the fat bears, but I might turn my attention the fat bears of Alaska and their fattening up process, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. I thought but you were I'm obsessed going... with federal politics. I don't, I don't think you could uh, no, fit that much in your obsessions. mind. I have lots of obsessions. <laughs> Multiple obsessions. It's, it's uh, so, of... I know you work in a uh, vocal medium, uh, but do we get to see Ruby the Roo? Have they unveiled Ruby yet? Yeah, yeah, Ruby's, Ruby's out there. Ruby's and we hopping are a around. Visual, we're a visual medium here when I talk to you on the news channel, yeah. my other great love and, and broadcast <laughs> outlet here. So, I think people, I think our producers will get the image because it has been released in, in Japan and we, they've done a big launch of it. Right. The image is there. Ruby's a beautiful kangaroo that deserves all of your love and attention. And uh, yeah, you sound a bit sceptical about the animation, but uh, maybe they could get Bluey next time. Since Bluey's been a blockbuster overseas. Okay, you, you've nailed it. So yeah. as soon as we talked about Ruby the Roo, um, and I love the alliteration, like the Ruby the Roo, it's just sort of like, a, it's got all of it. And Rose Byrne, everyone likes Rose Byrne, so her voice I think will probably work for Ruby. But I was inundated with text messages from our listeners saying, Bluey, hello. Um, right. I think they probably want to create something a bit more, I don't know, not just targeted at children, a bit broader that they create. Anyway, yeah. kangaroos are good, almost on equal par to fat bears. I love the, I love the breadth of our discussions. Okay, cheers, Patricia. They are more lean than fat bears, though, but I suppose <laughs> they don't have to hibernate. Different climate. Okay, cheers. Have a good one. See ya.